Today we are looking at the FL Sun Q5 Delta printer. And I want to explain why I believe that this is the perfect printer to get that person who's thinking about getting involved with 3D printing this year. So let's go ahead and get right into this. This is the FL Sun Q5. Now this is a Delta printer, which means it looks a little bit different than your traditional printers, which are known as the Cartesian printers. Those printers usually have a bracket up here with the extruder up here, and then the, the bed would move. In this case, the bed is always staying in the same fixed position, and the assembly up here has to move in a triangular motion. Now most of the time when we think about a 3D printer, we think of something very complicated and very hard to use, and that generally is true. However, not with this. This is why I want to recommend this printer for the 2020 holiday season. Now, there are a couple parameters that I selected when thinking about what printer I would want to purchase for someone for a first time usage in 3D printing. The first, the printer had to be under $250. $250, while being a lot of money, isn't at the high end. And I figured this is a good price range for a large gift to give somebody, perhaps one of your children or a relative, and could be a perfectly reliable substitute for a video game console. Now, Another parameter that I set forth was that the printer had to have an auto leveling feature because one of the hardest things to do with 3D printing is the leveling. So in the case of this printer, it does have auto leveling and it works extremely well. Another thing that the printer had to have was a touch screen and not only a touch screen that was colorful, but one that was practical and allowed the people to navigate it with ease. And in this case, this one includes that. Something else the printer had to be able to do was print a variety of filaments. This printer, as we'll talk about here in a few moments, is able to print PLA, ABS, PETG, and even TPU if you're careful. The next thing that the printer had to have was, of course, a heated bed plate, so it would keep the print nice and firm to the bed as you printed. Speaking of the bed, it also had to have a glass bed, and in this case, this one does have it. One other capability of the printer, it had to be able to print at least 200 by 200 by 200. And the reason for that was because I wanted it to be able to print a phone case because oftentimes when you get involved with 3D printing, someone will generally want to print something useful or practical and that may include a phone case. So this printer is big enough to print for most phone cases or even a video game controller. So once again, this printer uh, does its job. Something else the printer had to be capable of was being assembled easily and quickly. Oftentimes printers that you get at a price point like this will be a little bit more complicated or they will take a little bit more know-how. This particular printer can actually be assembled within 30 minutes and you can have it up and running in about 35. And the last requirement for the printer was that it needed to be quiet during printing. So now let's go ahead and talk about how this printer functions. As I said, it is a Delta printer, so it functions a little bit different than the Cartesian printers because a particular printer has a 32-bit main board, which means it can do calculations much faster, more accurately, and print faster. In this particular unit, I was able to print significantly faster than most of my other printers with a print speed of 100 millimeters per second. That's much faster than, let's say, my favorite printer, the Artillery Sidewinder, which I generally print around 60. So this does print fast, and that's a good thing. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and talk about the auto leveling system. It does have an auto leveling system in here where you would simply plug the sensor into the top and it comes near the bottom. It works extremely well. It takes a couple minutes to calibrate, but once it's calibrated, you don't have to do it again for a while. And that's very useful because as I said, the biggest challenge most people have with 3D printing is the leveling system. I found this one to be extremely level and remain consistent with all of my printing. The next thing is, when it comes to the auto leveling, that I really, really like is the fact that you can manually calibrate it the way you need. And by that, I mean, if you know that you're going to be using a filament such as TPU, you can actually calibrate it just a little bit more for the auto leveling so you can actually get that TPU the perfect layer height. Next, going along with the printing bed surface is the fact that it heats up pretty fast. The bed actually has to heat up first and then the nozzle. Speaking of the extruder, this is your standard Titan extruder here, nothing fancy, but it is pretty reliable. It has a 0.4 nozzle on it, so you can print your pretty much your standard resolution. During all my printing, I printed 0.2, and as I mentioned earlier, I print it at 100 millimeters per second. So it does deliver, it is consistent, and the extruding system on here 
while it is a Bowden system, it still can print TPU if you know what you're doing. If you wanna know more about how this printer can print TPU pretty well, leave a comment below and I'll look into doing a video for you if that's something you're interested in. Uh, it's very easy to load right here. At the top, we put the filament in at the top. Normally, I'm not a fan of this type of system because I don't like having all that weight up here. But because this is a Delta printer, it's more stable. It has three points here to distribute the weight. So unlike a Cartesian printer where it would only have two and this would be at the top, when it starts to vibrate, it would seriously vibrate the print and cause it oftentimes to... Uh, mess up the layer heights, you don't have that here. So that's actually pretty nice. Something else I really like about this printer for the holiday season is the fact that it doesn't take up much foot space in terms of the actual width. It is rather tall, but not too tall, definitely doesn't take up much space. As I mentioned that this thing is quick and easy to assemble. There really aren't a lot of parts to install here. The only thing that I found to be a little bit more challenging was on the power supply system because they ship it to you at a default of 230 volts, which seems kind of silly because here in North America, that voltage is usually uh, reserved for something like a large appliance, maybe like a dryer. This is not a dryer and nor will it take that much electricity. So I don't know why they have that set there. And it is just a switch, but it is a little bit of a challenge to get into there. They don't label it real well, uh, but all the connectors are labeled nice and easy. They connect very fast, simple. Uh, they're all color coded. Everything has the correct label for the X, Y, and Zs. Because the printer's so easy to build, you can actually have this thing up and running pretty quick, which makes it great for the holidays because then someone doesn't have to spend days or weeks on end trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, now, there are some videos online that you can watch to show you how to assemble it. You probably won't need that because the documentation, it, it pretty much covers what you need. Another thing that I said that this printer had to be able to do was print with a variety of filaments right out of the box with no hassle, no calibrations, and no upgrades. So it was able to print with PLA easily, PETG, and ABS pretty easily. So let's look at some of these prints to see what we think about them. First up was this right here. This is the test print that they give you. It is quite boring. Yes, I know this is not something that you would normally do. Normally you would have like a Benchy or something. Uh, but this gives you a pretty reasonable understanding of what this printer can do, PLA. Printed it pretty quick, pretty seamlessly. Uh, so PLA definitely can do. Layer heights printed just fine on it. There's no weird banding. Uh, very simple design though, so not probably the one that you're gonna to use to look at the reference point. In my case, I always like to use the good old fashioned Unifix cube. Now this Unifix cube was printed using ABS. I like to use the Unifix cube as a way to test how well the printer can do with details and precision. And in this case, this actually did a great job. This was printed with ABS. It's within the margin of error. We have the original factory one. Here's the print one that I printed out of ABS, as you can see, just like it came from the factory. So uh, did a great job with that little cube, very precise with all the angles, with all the layer heights, and more importantly, keeping the holes completely circular. Next, we have this flower. Now this flower was actually designed so it would go over a light and in this case this was made out of kind of a translucent material, this is PLA, uh, but it's what we call natural and it printed very very well. You can actually see the lines throughout here and it's super smooth which I like. So this printer does a great job with the smoothness, there's no rough edges. So it did a great job with that and as you can see it does a great job as it curves up. That's one one of the reasons why I like a Delta printer because it can do those things seamlessly. Next, we have the Christmas tree here that I designed, a little red Christmas tree, using both uh, PETG and PLA here. This is that natural here, and it did a great job with it. It's very solid. Details are perfect with it. Love the coloring. Actually precise to the way I designed it, so great job with that one. Then, we have this little pulley system also printed in PETG. And as you can see, turned out phenomenal. Didn't take too long. Was a little bit rougher on the extruder than I would have liked to have hoped because this requires a little bit higher of a temperature, but it printed phenomenal. 
printed it very strong, in fact. So if you're wanting to print with a semi-flexible uh, material, not too flexible, but one that's not so rigid that it's going to break, does a great job with PET-G. Was very shocked with this one that this printer was able to do this. These are some hurdles that I had designed for a marble project for my classroom. Now what I really liked about this particular printer and why I recommend it is because since it prints so quickly that I didn't have to use any supports on this and it, so when it was printing laying on the bed it was able to print these pretty fast more importantly it did it without support so it didn't waste materials it didn't waste time and it turned out pretty accurate then I printed this with a different type of PLA just to test it again and precision on this is really great this is actually the hurdle holder here and it just snaps on here very reliable very fast more importantly so did a great job with that and last but not least was the vase and the vase was a great opportunity for me to see how this printer would not only do with the layer heights but something a little bit bigger and more importantly because this is a delta printer the way it has to print in that triangular fashion you wouldn't think that this printer would be able to print so seamlessly in a circle because it's moving in a triangular pattern but this is actually one of the best vases i've seen and one of the best vases i've ever printed so it did a great job with that uh quick and easy this was printed at 100 millimeters per second this took approximately three and a half hours to print this that includes me changing out the filament here to be able to put in a different color then put the other color back in printed pla with this and speaking of changing the filament that's another reason why i recommended a touch screen because the touch screen in here is very intuitive it allows you to get into all the options that you need very quickly allows you to make some precision adjustments on the fly and allows you to do everything and see it visually it doesn't have the, the little knob so uh, one of the competitors to this would be the ender 3 and the ender 3 is a great machine but not necessarily for beginners i would recommend this because the auto leveling system of course but i like the touch screen because if you think about how we navigate most things on the smartphones especially uh younger people like children or teenagers that may be wanting to get involved with 3d printing this is going to seem more familiar to them more importantly it allows them to do what they need to quickly and i really really like that the machine itself is pretty quiet it's not the quietest machine so you are going to notice uh, a little bit of noise coming from it but it does a pretty good job of keeping the noise levels down uh, the stepper motors in here are pretty quiet they're not the quietest but it does print quietly in fact when you go to print here's what it sounds like and finally the last reason i would recommend this printer for the holiday season is because it is easy to use there's nothing fancy there's nothing hard about it they give you everything that you need they have a version of cura as the slicer in here it's a very old version of cura it's 2.7 but you can use the newer version the only downside is it doesn't have the profile set into it which in order to make the profile for this one you actually have to set it for the larger version of this but then when you manually go in there you can change it to 200 by 200. so it's not too difficult and it includes pretty much everything you need on a memory card it doesn't have wi-fi if you wanted wi-fi you'd have to step up to the next model which is substantially more expensive but this one i don't think you would need wi-fi so once again i think that this is a great printer to get someone started with for the first time so there you go those are my thoughts on why the fl sun q5 is a great holiday printer for someone who's just getting involved with 3d printing it has an auto leveling system for the bed to prevent frustration and inaccuracies when leveling and getting printing immediately it has a nice touch screen that is both intuitive colorful and more importantly very familiar to what we see with today's products it uses a 32-bit main board to help keep with the accuracy of the print. It has a heated glass bed that not only heats up quickly, but also is reliable and keeps the print adhered to it at all times. The printer allows you to print medium-sized items with ease. And most importantly, because the printer is well under $250, 
you can use that money to buy more and more filament, which is what you will need. Because when you get started with 3D printing, you want to have a variety of filaments and colors to print with other than what is included in the box. So those are my thoughts about the 2020 holiday printer that I would recommend. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Tell me what printer you think you'd recommend for a starter for the holiday seasons. And as always, thank you for watching.